Hey man, this is R.C. Blakes and we're getting ready to go back into the laws of manifesting your vision. Law number five, the law of partnership. Let's talk. Let's talk. You don't know how to be in the position. And we want to get back to our discussion on race relations in the United States. Plus, Pastor R.C. Blakes Jr. joins me now live Let's in New Orleans. Talk. And as leaders on a local level, when we begin to combat the rhetoric with the truth, Pastor, thank you so much for joining me. It's such a terrific conversation that we need to have to be having. Partnership defined. A partnership is a close relationship between two parties having specified or specific responsibilities for the advancement of both. It is not a partnership if only one part of the connection profits. It is only a partnership when both advance. Now, in, in the process of discovering, manifesting, actualizing, advancing your vision, uh, God will always assign people to strategically assist you in your life's journey. I would, man, I shudder to think what my life would be like if I did not have certain people in my life if I did not have certain partners that accomplish certain things. You know, it's amazing how God can bring people into your life and just those connections can open up the entire world to you. And I think you need to really pay close attention because there are some of you who are listening to me right now who have not valued, who have not valued relationships. You've not valued relationships and therefore you have negated partnerships. In Mark chapter two, verses one through five, it says, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one, one sick of the palsy, which was carried by four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press or the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. So in this text, the lame man is in a helpless position, but the beauty is that he has friends who come together, who work together, who partner together to help the man to get to the next level. And as a consequence of the partnership, the man is made whole. Now, a horrible and an antisocial attitude can work against your purpose or your vision. You will always need people. You will always need people. Every man, every woman must be wise enough to know how to build bridges to other people. It's very, very important. Right now, as I'm filming this, I'm in Dublin, Ireland. And I've made a couple of friends in Ireland already because a wise man knows how to build bridges. When I go back to Israel, I have friends in Israel that I can actually call and they'll come pick me up and they'll bring me to dinner or they'll bring me wherever I need to go because a wise man builds bridges. Partnerships are in, you cannot even... Uh, estimate the value of a partnership because the connection to one person can ultimately lead you to a thousand other great relationships. God established a system, listen to this very carefully, in the word of God, God established a system called covenant to ensure that partnership between people would be a necessity to success. And what is a covenant? A covenant, if you go into the Old Testament, into biblical times, a covenant would be uh, a farmer 
that comes into partnership with um, a hunter. And so the hunter would bring and provide the meat while the farmer would provide the produce. They needed each other. God set up the system that there would be a need for partnerships. This is why the Bible says God has not given to any man every gift. Jesus was the only one that possessed the spirit of God without measure. All of us have a part of something. None of us have all of everything. So it means that we have to function within the context of partnerships. This is one of my greatest struggles in the body of Christ is to get people to understand you cannot accomplish the vision by yourself. And though I know that you love your church and you love your pastor, your church and your pastor needs more than what you bring to the table. We have to all work together in a partnership to accomplish the vision that God has laid before us. From the very beginning, God established that he wanted man's dominion to be the consequence of partnership. If you look in Genesis 1.26, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, them plural, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the, but let them have dominion. Dominion has always been a partnership concept. And this is probably the reason why many of us are failing to step into dominion in life. It's because we have not valued partnerships. In fact, what we have done is we have wrecked relationships with people that we really needed. The Bible says in Romans 12, 4 and 5, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. None of us has it all. My body is, is the symphony of partnerships. My fingers work with my hand. When my mind wants to uh, grip a bottle, my fingers come together and wrap around the bottle. The palm of my hand holds the bottle. Uh, when, when my mind says, I want to drink, my mouth opens and the, the fingers and the hand raise the bottle up to the mouth so that the mind can satisfy the body's thirst. My body is a symphony of partnerships. When we look in, um, well, let me say this before I say that. You will never maximize your potential apart from partnerships. This is why, and I know this may be a little off subject, but I think it bears mentioning. This is why even in the pursuit of relationships, you have to search for someone that is more than sexually attractive can this person be a great partner? Do they have something to bring to the table? And can I add something to their life? In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And the threefold cord is not quickly broken. So we see here that partnerships are mandatory. When men come together, God gets involved. I think that's the most powerful truth about partnerships is that when we function together in unity, God gets involved. In Matthew chapter 18, 19, and 20, he says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So God gets involved with partnerships. Personal vision requires partnership because your vision will benefit others when it is manifested. If you have a vision that does not include the advancement of others, it is really not a vision, it's just simply a vain ambition. So vision requires partnerships because vision is supposed to advance more than you. 
Listen to what the word of God says in Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, there are three benefits of partnership. Number one, partners give us additional perspective that we otherwise would not have. When I have partners, they can say, I think you should probably look at doing it this way because they bring additional perspective. Number two, partners provide additional talents that we do not possess. Uh, I don't have to be a lawyer. I don't have to have a law degree because I have lawyers. They bring, they bring a dimension of talent and know-how to areas where I'm lacking. Number three, Partners provide additional strength in times of weakness. When I am weak, my partners are strong. Where I am weak, my partners are strong. The right people will always identify themselves by supporting your weaknesses. You will know your partners because they will be the persons that support your weaknesses. Invite someone to share like this video, you, you know what to do. Like it, comment, do all of that good stuff and meet me next time. And just know I love you with all of my heart. God's best for you.